And there's a lot of questions swirling exactly what happens next. So let's bring in CBS Chicago legal analyst Irv Miller. Irv, good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us again this morning. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Donald Trump said even before sentencing that even Mother Teresa would be convicted if she were in his seat. So if the verdict wasn't necessarily a surprise to the former president, were there any surprises that did come out in just the ending of this trial? The only surprise there is, is for me is that he was convicted on all counts. Um, I thought that uh, he would be convicted on the counts uh, that involve him actually signing the checks and they would perhaps find him not guilty on all the uh, ledgers and, and other um, counts that were in there. Um, because, you know, it's hard to explain how your signature ended up on a, on a check and his, his signature is very distinctive, as we all know. Mm -hmm. Sentencing is now set for July 11th, which is just four days before the start of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. So what actions can Trump's team take between now and then? You know, they could ask for a delay of the sentencing to put it after the convention. Um, that's it's not an unusual move for a defendant to request additional time uh, to bring in more mitigation, to have uh, character letters come in. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if, if they attempt to do that. But again, like everything else in this case from this point on, it's at the total discretion of the judge. The judge could easily say, no, that's the date. Be ready. Uh, it's going on that date. Trump's team already, of course, vowing to appeal. Does his team realistically have grounds for an appeal? And how long can we all expect that process to take? Uh, maybe years. Yeah. Uh, public courts don't move uh, very quickly. It, it's not like you go to court every so often. You submit written briefs to the appellate court, which they read, and they may decide to have oral argument. Um, but as far as um, the sentencing itself, uh, uh, I think that that will take place, um, you know, within a short time period, if not on uh, the July 11th. Um, I, I do believe that the question of what the possible sentence is is still up in the air. I think that his behavior between now and the sentencing date, as far as uh, what he says about the judge and and and, the, and the, more importantly, the criminal justice system means a lot. And uh, as to whether or not his freedom is at stake um, in the future, because it very well may be at stake. Hmm. Trump currently has three other cases in the courts right now, one in Georgia for allegedly trying to overturn the election, one in federal court for the same thing, and then for allegedly taking classified documents out of the White House to his home at Mar-a-Lago. Does yesterday's verdict have any kind of impact on these other cases right now? Um, it shouldn't. Um, those are separate cases in different jurisdictions. Uh, uh, one state case, two federal cases. Um, they are on a different uh, speed track, if, we, if I could call it that, uh, as opposed to the New York case, uh, particularly the document case in Florida. It seems to be going quite slowly. Um, none of those cases will even come close to being heard before uh, uh, the election in November. Uh, I, and, you know, the judge may take those cases into consideration in deciding what the appropriate sentence is in this case in July. But uh, I, I don't think that's a significant uh, aggravating factor. I think the other factors um, that will go into the sentencing decision, the mitigation, the aggravation are his behavior. Uh, the, the fact that uh, he's, he's a first time offender as far as mitigation goes. But I think if, if he keeps talking the way he's talking right now, he may talk himself into jail. Mm. Uh, you know, the judge already has found him uh, that he's been uh, in violation of 10 gag orders just by this judge alone. And if he keeps on doing it, that will give the judge no other choice but to impose a harsh sentence as opposed to what a typical first offender would get. Irv, I just have to ask you to wrap this. I mean, as a longtime lawyer, so the, the Chicago Tribune wrote this morning that this was an extraordinary moment for the American justice system. What is your reaction just overall to the fact that we now have a former president who has been convicted of a crime? You know, I hate to um, merge the uh, uh, political issues with legal issues, but I don't think there's any way you could avoid doing that in this particular case. He is a former president. He's the, he's the presumptive candidate to be on uh, the Republican ticket for president uh, uh, this year. Um, it, 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 it Just the media attention and the attention that uh, the entire country is paying. But the problem I see is the divisive nature uh, of what this conviction is causing. Mm. And I think 
for all of those reasons uh, uh, that it, it is, you know, some people call different cases the case of the century. Well, th it, this, because of the political and the legal implication, is the case of, of the century. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a situation that, you know, when you uh, take political science in college, they don't tell you about the possibility of a former president uh, being a convicted felon. CBS2 legal analyst Irv Miller. Irv, thank you very much for your time this morning. I see you're in your car, so you're obviously a very busy man on the go. So thank you for taking the time with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jackie. Take care. Thank you. You too.